Hi everybody. So for today's video, I'm going to be making you a review sort of study guide for your module one part B assessment. So you're going to want to have your math one module one packet out. It's the pink packet that we've been using throughout this unit. You are going to want to write down notes and all of the things that I write down in your packet in the back. If you turn all the way to the back of your packet to page 78, and 79 and 80. These are all blank pages where you can take notes today while I'm making this video. Now I would highly encourage you to write this down and the reason is because you can use these notes to help you study and quite honestly you can also use these notes if you get stuck during the test to help you out with some of your thinking or some of those problems. So I would like to make sure that you actually write these down today so that if you needed to get some help or you need some extra practice these are available to you as sort of study guides or notes. So let's start with the first big idea of this second part of the module. The first big idea is going to be evaluating functions. Now when I say evaluating functions, what that means is that we are going to be plugging in numbers. So an example of these types of problems would be a problem like this. Let's say, for example, that I tell you that you have two equations. You have f of x is equal to negative 3x plus 1. And you also know that g of x is equal to 5 to the x power. An example problem would be if I say find f of 4. Now if I say find f of 4, what this means, because the 4 is on the inside of the parentheses, is that you need to plug in 4 in the equation instead of x. So I would go to the f of x equation, and all I'm going to do here is replace the x with the number 4. So what you'll notice is that I'm going to copy down the equation, so negative 3, and just write a 4 in parentheses instead of the x. Then I'm also going to copy down the plus 1. Now, after I write that out, my next step is going to be just to type this in on my calculator. And when I do that, I should get negative 11, which is the answer to this problem. As a second example, let's say that I ask you to find g of 2. So for finding g of 2, all I would do is plug in the number 2. instead of the x. So in the g of x equation, I would replace the x with the number 2, which means I would get 5 to the second power, which is going to be 25, and that would be my final answer. Now, in addition to asking you to plug in numbers, it's also possible for me to ask you to plug in variables. So my next example is, what if I say find f of m? All that this means is take the letter m and replace the x in the equation with m. So then I would write negative 3 and then parentheses m, and then plus 1. Now once I write that out, I'm going to realize I can't type this in on my calculator this time because I don't have all numbers. I actually have a letter m. So since I can't type this in and get an answer that's a number, that expression is my answer. Now I could do the same thing when my x is of an exponent. So I could say find g of p, for example, and that would mean replace the x 
with p. And if I do that, I would have 5, and then I would change the x to a p, so to the p power. Once again, I can't type that in on my calculator, so that would be my final answer. All right, the second big topic that's on our test is going to be to write sequences using an equation. So if I give you an equation, can you write the sequence that that comes from? Now there are two types of equations that I could give you. I could give you an explicit equation or I could give you a recursive equation. And depending on what type of equation you have, there are different methods for writing out the sequence. So we're going to go over both of those right now. An example of an explicit equation would be, if it's arithmetic, something like this, f of x equals negative 3x plus 1. Or if it was geometric, it would be something like this, f of x equals 5 to the x power. An example of a recursive equation, if it's um, arithmetic, would be something like this, f of x equals f of x minus 1 plus 2 with the starting value f of 1 equals 5. Or if it's geometric, it would be something like this, f of x equals f of x minus 1 times 2, and I'm going to use the same starting value just for fun. So be f of 1 equals 5. Now when I ask you to do this, I'm always going to ask you to find the first five terms. So you're going to see a problem where there's like little lines, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we're going to find the first five terms for each of these sequences, and we're going to do that using the equation. So let's start with how we do this with explicit equations. Step number one is going to be for me to label the terms. So this is term number one, term number two, three, four, and five. In order to find the actual value of the terms, we're just going to plug these numbers in for x in the equation. So first we're going to plug in the number 1, then we'll plug in the number 2, then we'll plug in the number 3, then we'll plug in the number 4, then we'll plug in the number 5 instead of the x in the equation. Now if I plug in the number 1, I get negative 3 times 1 plus 1, which gives me negative 2. So my first number here is going to be negative 2. If I plug in the number 2, I get negative 3 times 2 plus 1, which means I get negative 5. So my next number here will be negative 5. If I plug in the number 3, I get negative 3 times 3 plus 1, which means I get negative 8. So you're going to see that I'm just plugging in the number 1, plugging in the number 2, plugging in the number 3, plugging in the number 4. If I plug in the number 4, I get negative 11, and if I plug in the number 5, I get negative 14. Now the second way to think about this problem is that we can actually find the common difference by looking at the equation. The common difference is always the pattern, which is multiplied by the x. And you'll notice that to go from negative 2 to negative 5, we are subtracting 3. And we're going to be subtracting 3 each time here. So you can think about this in terms of the pattern or as just plugging in the number each time. Either way, though, you do need to plug in the number 1 to get the starting value. You always have to plug that in. Otherwise, you won't have the right starting value for your pattern. Now, let's do another example, but this time we'll do a geometric sequence. So I'm going to start by labeling 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to plug in these numbers again to get the pattern. So I'm going to start by plugging in the number 1, then the number 2, then the number 3, then the number 4, then the number 5, which means if I plug in the number 1, I get 5 to the first power, which is 5. 
If I plug in the number 2, I get 5 squared, which is 25. And if I keep plugging in numbers, I get 125. I get 625. And then I don't even know what I get after that. 625 times 5, which should be, let's see here, 625. 625 times 5, which is 3125. Oops, 3125. So again, the, the kind of method you want to use when it's an explicit equation is just plug in the term number to get the value. Now, if it's recursive, there's a different way to do it. Recursive equations are always going to tell you the starting value. So I know that term number 1 has a value of 5. And recursive equations are also always going to tell you the pattern. So here, rather than plugging in numbers, I'm just going to keep using the pattern. So if I add 2, I get 7. If I add 2 again, I get 9. If I add 2 again, I get 11. And if I add 2 again, I get 13. Now for the next problem, they still give me the starting value. So I'm going to start with the number 5 for term number 1. And then again, I'm going to use the pattern because with a recursive equation, it's easiest to just take the previous number and multiply by 2 or use the pattern. So if I multiply by 2, I get 10. If I multiply by 2, I get 20. If I multiply by 2, I get 40. And if I multiply by 2, I get 80. And that would be my sequence. All right, the next big topic in this unit is going to be vocabulary words for sequences. So there are a couple different things that I need you to know I need you to know how to do when you look at an equation. So the next big topic is going to be sequence vocabulary. Now, there are two big things I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you, is this sequence arithmetic or geometric? So we need to know how to tell the difference between those two things. And the next thing I'm going to ask you is, is this sequence explicit or recursive? I'm sorry, is the equation explicit or recursive? And so we're going to need to know how to tell the difference between those two things as well. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to know that we have an arithmetic sequence if there are no exponents in the equation or if the pattern is adding or subtracting. We're going to know that we have a geometric sequence if the equation does have exponents or if the pattern is multiplication. So what I'd like to do is just write down some examples and show you how you would tell the difference. So here are some examples of arithmetic sequence equations. For explicit examples, we have f of x equals 5 plus 2x, or we could have f of x equals 5 plus 2 times x minus 3. And the only difference here would be the starting input value. With this first equation, the starting input value would be 0, and the second equation would have a starting input value of 3. A recursive example would be something like this, f of x equals f of x minus 1 plus 2. And the starting value here would be f of 1 equals 7. Or we could have a recursive equation where we are subtracting, which means we would have f of x equals f of x minus 1 minus 2. And we can have the starting value, the same starting value of 7. So I'm going to know this should say pattern. I'm going to know that these are arithmetic because there are no exponents in the equation. And I'm going to know that these are arithmetic because the pattern is adding or subtracting.
Now, as far as geometric examples, we're going to do something similar, write down some examples and look at how we can tell that they're geometric. A good explicit example would be something like f of x equals 5 times 2 to the x power, or f of x equals 5 times 2 to the x minus 3 power, if your um, sequence did not start at 0. An explicit, I'm sorry, a recursive example would be f of x equals f of x minus 1 times 2 with the starting value f of 1 is equal to 7. So what you'll notice is that these two problems do have exponents and that's what makes them a geometric sequence and that this problem has multiplication and that that is what makes this a geometric sequence. Now let's talk about telling the difference between explicit and recursive. An explicit equation does not use the previous term in the equation. And a recursive equation does use the previous term in the equation. So I think it helps to see some examples here so we can see what's the same and what's different. For our examples for explicit, our explicit equations could be arithmetic or geometric, but they would maybe look like this, 5 plus 2x, and then maybe 5 plus 2 times x minus 3. Or if we wanted some geometric examples, maybe 5 times 2 to the x power, or 5 times 2 to the x minus 3 power. You'll notice that none of these equations use the previous term. None of them say f of x minus 1. A recursive equation always uses the previous term and a starting value. So an example of a recursive equation would be f of x equals f of x minus 1 plus 2, where we know that the starting value is 7 or f of x equals f of x minus 1 minus 2, where we know that the starting value is 7, or f of x equals f of x minus 1 times 2, where we know that the starting value is 7. It doesn't really matter what the starting value is, you just have a starting value. That's part of what makes it recursive. Um, You'll notice that every one of these equations starts the same way. f of x is equal to f of x minus 1 and then the pattern. That's because with a recursive equation, we are always finding the new number by looking at the previous number and then applying the pattern to it, whether it's adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Okay, now that we've talked about sequence vocabulary, I think it's important to also talk about um, how to write equations because it's really, that's gonna be one of the biggest parts of what's on the assessment. So the next big topic is going to be writing equations. Now, my advice to you is this. I'm going to ask you to write equations when you have a word problem. I'm going to ask you to write equations when you have a graph. I'm going to ask you to write equations when you have a visual pattern. But no matter what, my advice to you is going to be to make a table before you start. I think that once you have a table of values, it's always easier to write the equation. So that's the type of examples that we're going to go over right now. The first example we're going to go over is going to be a table that looks like this. If we've got x and y, and I'm going to start this table with 2, 3, 4, 5. And for the y values, I'm going to start at 10, and then I'm going to have 13, 16, 19. Now the first thing I'm going to do if I want to do this problem is I'm going to write a recursive equation and I'm also going to practice writing an explicit equation. So step one is find the pattern. The pattern here is going to be plus three and that pattern applies every time. 
That also tells me that this is an arithmetic sequence. So I would expect to see if I was to graph this, it would be a straight line. For the recursive equation, it always starts the same way. So I'm writing this in black because I want you to realize that it is literally always the same at the beginning of a recursive equation. Um, instead of y here, let me change this to f of x. I just like that notation a little better. After we write that out, we're going to need to say what pattern is happening. So I'm putting the plus 3 here because that is the pattern that I found in the table. Now the second part of a recursive equation, and you have to write this down or you're not going to get to be able to have full credit for this question, is that you need to write the starting value. Now the starting value in this table is 2, 10. So I would write start at f of 2 equals 10. If you want to apply a pattern, you have to start somewhere. So if I know the pattern is adding 3, I also need to know where to start. This is the starting input. And this is the starting output. Now for the explicit equation, it starts the same way. f of x equals. Then we're going to write down the starting output, which is 10. And then the pattern, which in this problem is plus 3. And now because this is arithmetic, I'm just going to put a regular parentheses with an x. If this was geometric, I would use an exponent, just like I wrote on the other page. All geometric explicit has an exponent. And then I need to look at the starting input value. Now, by default, we always want our table to start with 0 as the input. So if it doesn't start with 0, we need to kind of adjust our equation. In this case, we would have to write minus 2 here in order to get back to 0. Because if you have 2 to get back to 0, you have to have minus 2. Now, as another example problem, I would like to do a problem where we have maybe a geometric sequence in the table. So I'm going to have x and f of x again. I'm going to say we're going to start at 5, 6, 7, 8, and I'm going to go with 3, and then 15, and then 75, and then what would come next? Let's see here. I'm going to use a calculator to figure it out really quick and then 375. Now I'm going to write both a recursive and an explicit equation here. So for the recursive equation, it always starts the same way. f of x equals f of x minus 1. And now I need to find the pattern. And in this problem, the pattern is times 5. So I would write times 5 here at the end. And then just like before, I need to include the starting value. And the starting value here would be f of 5 equals 3. Now for my explicit equation, it's always going to start f of x equals just like before, I'm going to take my starting output. So this is the first output. Then I'm going to put my pattern, which in this problem is times 5. And then to the power of x. And you'll notice I'm using an exponent here because this is geometric. And then I need to get my table to start back at 0. So if it's got a 5, I need to put x minus 5 here because I need to look at the first input and try to get it back to 0. We've always said 0 is like home base. You want to get back to 0. One thing I do want to note here is that we used an exponent because anytime you have a geometric sequence, you need to have an exponent in the explicit equation. So that's kind of important to realize um, because that is something that I've noticed goes wrong a lot when I give you guys kind of practice problems. That is a common mistake that I see.
All right, um, that's kind of the big ideas that are on the assessment. There are other things on the assessment, such as choosing whether to use the explicit or recursive is more efficient, and um, explaining the meaning of the common difference or the common ratio. But this is kind of the biggest chunk of the assessment, so I'm hoping that by going over this again and writing it all down, it will help you to be prepared for the actual test. Um, again, I expect you to write this down in your packet so that you have it as a study tool for when you're taking and preparing for the assessment. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing your assessment and your practice test.